But there's a bit of bad news for the Philadelphia 76ers. The league has changed. These scuffles are a rare appearance in today's NBA, with stricter rules, bigger fines, and bigger punishments. But why has the league become so soft? There's a bit more going on than you might think. Everybody, we've got yeah. punches thrown. Ewing, Cartwright, it's right in front of In 1979, a rule was put into place to increase the speed of the game by decreasing the aggressiveness of the defense. The NBA banned hand checking. Hand checking is essentially the act of placing your hand or forearm on your opponent to interrupt their movement and make it easier to stay with them defensively. By banning hand checking, the NBA allowed offensive stars to have more space and time. This led to an increase league-wide in points per game and field goal percentage. The timing of the rule change couldn't have been better, as a year later in 1980, the three-point line was established. Introducing a three-point line gave offenses even more options when it came to scoring, and gave defenses even more to worry about. If hand checking was still allowed, then the defensive player would have a much easier time staying with his matchup. Now instead, he has to worry about giving up space to the offense as they decide to either pull from three, drain a two, or take it to the basket. Hand checking greatly reduced the aggressiveness of defenses when it came to levels of physicality, but the hard hitting fouls that often led to brawls and scuffles were still common. In the 1980s, players were just beating each other up. So the league had to step in and take control over the physicality of the game, with the aim to create a basketball system centered around skill and finesse rather than brute force and muscle. If fans wanted the thrill of seeing grown men smash into each other, then they already had the NFL and rugby leagues to satisfy. So in 1991, to combat this issue, the NBA implemented a flagrant foul rule with a focus on maintaining player safety and punishing excess physicality. Defensive players no longer had the freedom to just straight up hack players driving to the basket. While the hand checking rule was introduced in 1979, it wasn't until 1995 that the league properly enforced it. This was partially due to Michael Jordan dominating the NBA. MJ was bringing viewers in from everywhere, and the league wanted to give players like Michael more opportunity to score by reducing the punishment he received from the defense. In turn, more points were scored, leading to a more exciting and fun brand of basketball that fans enjoyed. Fast forward to the modern era, and the crackdown on hand checking is something that stars take advantage of on a nightly basis. For example, James Harden is notorious for drawing fouls by swinging his arms into the opponent's body intentionally in some sort of shooting motion. This reduced a lot of physicality from the game, and when mixed with some Hollywood-level acting skills, gave players an easy out at the free throw line. If physicality was an NBA player, it would be Shaquille O'Neal. Shaq was arguably the most dominant big man of all time, and the first player to start putting up monster double-doubles every night since Wilt Chamberlain. There was genuinely no player that could match his size and pure strength. Now the NBA seems to have a problem with big men dominating the league for some reason. They don't think it's as exciting as wing play and guards crossing up defenders. In fact, in 1964, when Wilt was dominating everybody, averaging 50 points a game and over 25 rebounds a game for the season, they expanded the lane from 12 feet to 16 feet in an attempt to give more power to perimeter players and curb the dominance of big men such as Wilt. And then, if we go back even further, in 1951, they had expanded the lane from 6 feet to 12 feet, with the same purpose of minimizing the impact of superstar big men and encouraging wing and guard play. Talk about favoritism! Well, when Shaq was taking the league by storm, the men upstairs decided to do something about it. Only problem was that they couldn't really extend the lane any further than it was. Instead, in 2002, they decided to legalize the use of zone defense, which was banned in 1947, in order to encourage dominance by superstar players. Zone defense would allow teams to slow down dominant big men such as Shaq and level out the league once again. The NBA favors the offensive game and have changed the rules to suit what fans find appealing. At the end of the day, the NBA is one of the world's biggest franchises, and money is at the top of their priority list. The only problem in doing this is that it has caused the league to become soft, playing for fouls rather than taking it strong to the rack. Players used to step onto the court with an intention to kill. No love between oppositions, just a hard-fought battle where both teams did whatever they could to get the win. Teams like the Bad Boy Pistons in the 80s and 90s, who were known for their physical and defensive style of play, found success within their take-no-prisoners attitude, winning back-to-back -back championships. Fast forward to now, and imagine that style of play was implemented by a team, let's say the current Bad Boys of the NBA, Memphis. Imagine the Memphis Grizzlies adopted the 89 Pistons' physical gameplay in today's era. 
there would be outrage from other teams, complaints of excessive force and continuous injury concerns. Not to mention, almost the entire roster would get ejected. Players would genuinely not look forward to playing them. But back then, that's just how it was. No questions asked. You either go out there and match their intensity, or you come off second best. On the flip side, player safety has become a lot better and longevity is being prioritized, but there's no denying that the NBA has become a lot softer. Even with these precautions in place to protect stars, we still see the likes of Kawhi Leonard sitting out for half the year for load management reasons. Players used to play every game of the season comfortably, and now witnessing McCall Bridges play every single game is labeled as an astonishing feat. With the technological advancements in the past 20 years, an athlete's risk of injury and soreness should be at an all-time low. With access to physios, massage therapists, cryotherapy, you name it, there's never been a more recovery-friendly time in the history of the sport. Players should have the confidence to go out each night and put their bodies on the line, knowing that they have the support behind them to feel 100% the next day. Yet the mindset of today's players just isn't the same as it used to be. Now, obviously, there are the exempt few who go all in every time they're on the floor. But compared to the 1900s and early 2000s, the numbers are far below. Is the NBA just soft now? Well, Tracy McGrady thinks so. On Draymond Green's podcast, he called today's league soft, but also said that the players aren't to blame. Often, past players like to bring up that they would absolutely dominate in today's game, but the reasoning is there. Uh, do you think today's NBA, you, you would have thrived even more? The way you play, all the hand checking, they could, the reality is the league is soft today. Come on, man, you guys shooting three-pointers are shooting shots now and you land on somebody's foot, it's a flagrant foul. Like. The argument that past superstars would thrive in today's environment is often discussed, with strong reasons for and against. The only way we could ever really know is if we could drop players into a different timeline. But obviously, time travel isn't a thing right now. Do you think past players like T-Mac make a good point? He's not the only one. Even the NBA logo, Jerry West, while on Paul George's podcast, talked about his dislike of today's NBA compared to his era. There's some nights I go and it's hard for me to watch. In this sense, I'd rather see somebody make a beautiful pass, go in and lay it up, instead of four on one, some guy runs beyond the three point line and shoots a three. The game is soft that way today. I don't like it. I don't think it makes for pretty basketball. We've looked at the NBA's rule changes and the difference in the mentality of players. But what about one of the most frowned upon acts in basketball? Flopping. When we think of flopping or acting for a foul, we often link it to football or soccer. Players like Neymar who have gained a not so great reputation for faking injuries even on the world stage. But the modern NBA is not as far behind as you might think. Free throws have become an integral part of a team's success in recent history and can quite easily determine if they win the game or not. Who doesn't love some free, uncontested shots? That is broken out here at Staples. Sorry, I had to. Back to the point. To win the game, teams need to be efficient with their scoring, and there isn't a more efficient way to score than a free throw. So now players do what they can to get to the line. This is where flopping has become so prominent in today's game, with players selling the act left, right, and center. The Lakers were the league leaders last season with almost 2,200 free throw attempts for the year. With the NBA's relaxed rules in recent years, acting for a foul started to get so bad that as of last season, the NBA finally had to introduce a penalty for flopping. What do you think about the current state of today's game? Would it be better if we went back to the way basketball was played in the 90s? Is the league too soft or just right? I hope you enjoyed your walk down Hoop Street, and we'll catch you in the next one.